So as we explained, the different uh, text representation tends to enable different analysis. In particular, we can gradually uh, add more and more deeper uh, analysis results uh, to represent text data. And that would open up a more interesting representation um, opportunities and also analysis uh, capacities. So this table summarizes what we have just seen. So the first column shows the text representation. The second uh, visualizes the generality of such a representation, meaning whether we can do this kind of representation accurately for all the text data or only some of them. And the third column shows the enabled analysis techniques. And the final column shows some examples of application that can be achieved through uh, this level of representation. So let's take a look at them. So as a string, text uh, can only be processed by using string processing algorithms, but it's very robust, it's general. And there are still some interesting applications that can be done at this level. For example, compression of text doesn't necessarily need to know the word boundaries, although knowing word boundaries might actually also help. Word-based representation is a very important level of representation. It's quite general and relatively robust. It can enable a lot of analysis techniques, such as word relation analysis, topic analysis, and sentiment analysis. And there are many applications that can be enabled by this kind of analysis. For example, uh, thesaurus discovery has to do with discovering related words. And topic and rela uh, opinion related applications uh, are abundant. And there are, for example, uh, you know, people might be interested in knowing the major topics covered in the collection of text. And this can be the case um, in research literature. And scientists want to know what are the most uh, important uh, research topics today. Or customer service people might want to know what are the major complaints from their customers about so by mining their email messages. And business intelligence people might be interested in uh, understanding consumers' opinions about their products and competitors' products to figure out uh, what are the winning features of their products. And in general, there are um, many um, applications that can be enabled by the representation at this level. Now, moving down, we'll see we can gradually add additional representations. By adding syntactic structures, we can enable, of course, syntactic graph analysis. We can use graph mining algorithms to analyze syntactic graphs. And some applications are related to this kind of uh, representation. For example, stylistic analysis generally requires syntactic representation, syntactic structure representation. We can also generate the structure-based feature, uh, features. And those are features that might help us classify uh, text objects into different categories. By looking at the structures, sometimes the classification uh, can uh, be more accurate. For example, if you want to classify articles um, into uh, different categories corresponding to different authors, you want to figure out uh, which which of the K authors has actually written this article, then you generally need to look at the, uh, the syntactic structures. When we add entities and relations, then we can enable uh, a lot of techniques such as knowledge graph analysis or information network analysis in general. And this analysis uh, would enable applications uh, about the entities. Uh, for example, discovery of all the knowledge and opinions about the real world energy, uh, entity. You can also use this, this level of rep representation to integrate everything about the entity from scattered sources. Finally, when we add uh, logical predicates, then we would in enable logical inference, of course. And this is, can be very useful for integrative analysis of scattered knowledge. And for example, we can also add ontology on top of the uh, extracted information from text to make inferences. A good example of application in this, uh, enabled by this level of representation is an uh, intelligent knowledge assistant for biologists. 
and this is an intelligent program that can help biologists uh, manage all the re relevant uh, knowledge from literature about the research problem, such as understanding functions of genes. And the computer can uh, make inferences about uh, uh, some of the hypotheses that the biologist might be interested in, for example, whether a gene has a certain function. And then the intelligent program can read the literature uh, to extract the relevant facts uh, do it by doing information extraction and then using a logical system to actually track, let's say, answers to a researcher's question about uh, what genes are related to what functions. So in order to support this level of application, we need to go as far as logical representation. Now, this course uh, is covering techniques mainly based on word-based representation. And these techniques are general and robust and thus are more widely used in various applications. And in fact, uh, in virtually all the text mining applications, you need this level of representation and the techniques uh, that support analysis of text in this level. But obviously all these other levels um, can be combined and should be combined in order to support the sophisticated applications. So to summarize, here are the major takeaway points. Text representation determines what kind of mining algorithms can be applied. And there are multiple ways to represent the text. Strings, words, syntactic structures, entity relation graphs, logical predicates, etc. And these different representations representations should in general be combined in real applications to the extent we can. Uh, for example, if, even if we cannot do um, accurate uh, disambiguation of syntactic structures, we can still get partial structures extracted. And if we can recognize some entities, and that would be great. So in general, we want to do as much as we can. And when different levels are combined together, we can enable a richer analysis, more powerful analysis. This course, however, focuses on word-based representation. Such techniques have also several advantages. Uh, first, they are general and robust, so they are applicable to any natural language. That's a big advantage over other approaches that rely on more fragile natural language processing techniques. Secondly, it does not require much manual effort, or sometimes it does not require any manual effort. So that's again an important benefit because that means you can apply it directly to any application. Uh, third, these techniques are actually surprisingly powerful and effective for many applications. Although not all, of course, as I just explained, now, they are very effective, partly because the words are invented by humans uh, as basic units for communications. So they are actually quite sufficient for representing all kinds of semantics. So that makes this kind of word-based representation also um, powerful. And finally, such a word-based representation and the techniques enabled by such a representation can be combined with uh, many other sophisticated approaches. So they are not competing with each other.